Do you want to know the truth about the SVS Ultra speakers from an owner that spent the last six months with these speakers? Well, then you're in the right place. In today's video, I'm going to give you my pure, unadulterated opinion on the SVS Ultra Towers. I'm Barrett. This is Becca Tech. Welcome to the channel. Let me start by saying that I purchased all of my SVS speakers with my own money, and that includes the SVS Ultra Towers that I was using for the front left, center, and right speakers, which means that SVS, along with anybody else for that matter, does not have any say or any influence on what I'm about to say in this video. What you're going to get in this video is the God's honest truth about what I think about these speakers, my likes, my dislikes, and yes, of course, there's going to be some demos. If you are looking for a full review of these speakers, I have done one on the channel. I'll link it in the top right hand corner, as well as down in the description below. So this video won't be a review per se. It's more of what I think of these speakers after owning them for the last six months. Maybe you're just trying to learn about SVS or what the hype is all about, or maybe you're thinking of purchasing these speakers but you're kind of on the fence. Either way, I hope this video clears it up for you. And if that is the case and you want to check out more detailed specs or pricing on the SVS Ultra Towers, or any of the other SVS speakers for that matter, I have dropped links down in the description below. And just remember that SVS does have a 45 day trial period, so you really have nothing to lose. And I do want to know what you guys think as well, whether you agree with my assessment or disagree. Uh, drop your comments down below, but let's keep it respectful and friendly. All right, guys, you know here at Speca Tech we don't like wasting any time, so let's get into this video. Throughout this video, guys, please do remember that I keep price in mind when talking about a product, so I'm not going to go into this with $10,000 expectations. These speakers are $2,000 US dollars a pair, and I keep that in mind when I'm discussing them. Let's rip the band-aid off right off the start, and let's talk about what I don't like about these speakers. The first thing that I wasn't fond of with these speakers is that they don't come with magnetic grills. They have the traditional peg and grommet style grill, and it's not that they look bad or anything, or that that system is just garbage and doesn't work. I just prefer to see a magnetic grill on a speaker of this caliber. For the most part guys this doesn't really affect me because I don't typically use the grills, although with magnetic grills the front of the speaker is a little bit cleaner because you don't have any holes for the pegs to go into for the grill. For the most part I don't feel like this is going to be a huge issue for people, uh, but I did want to point out that they aren't magnetic grills and I would have personally preferred magnetic grills. The second thing is a bit of a rock in a hard place type complaint and I'll discuss why once we get to the section where I discuss my likes. But these speakers are difficult to keep clean and gloss black, which of course will be a non-issue for anybody that does get these in black ash but mine are gloss black and the fingerprints guys oh my goodness the fingerprints i mean for the most part once you finish setting up your speakers with your hands you can just wipe off all the fingerprints and palm prints and they should remain that way unless of course you have some handsy people or some handsy kids around the house the other issue with gloss black is of course dust uh, dust is much easier to see on these speakers so i do keep a microfiber cloth close by so i can gently wipe them down every so often it definitely can be a pet peeve for some but gloss black isn't all bad and we're going to get to that in just a second. This next one here could be looked at as a bit of a nitpick uh, because it can be true for a lot of speakers out there, but that is that these are a little bit finicky with their placement. I know that there's some of you out there that have mentioned that it's difficult to place because of the side firing woofers. I didn't experience any of those issues myself personally. So what I'm discussing here is placement for imaging. So in some cases, there were days where I would be listening to my speakers and one of them must have just been bumped or maybe I moved it a little bit when I was trying to get behind my audio rack. Uh, but I could hear that the sounds were coming a little bit farther from the right or a little bit farther from the left so what I had to do is basically make that one inch or two inch tweak either with the toe in or a little bit farther from the wall and then you would get it locked in again and you would be rewarded with great imaging all right guys so that pretty much covers my dislikes for these speakers and I will be 100% honest I actually had to sit down and think about this uh, for the price of these speakers it was difficult to find flaws but of course no speaker is perfect now let's move on to what I do like about these speakers and again to be honest this list was easier to come up with than my list of dislikes Real quick before we move on though, if you guys are into audio and home theater, please consider subscribing and tick the bell icon if you do subscribe and please take just one second out of your day to click the like button down below. It really takes you no time at all and I really appreciate it. Okay, so let's talk about what I do like about these speakers. And to be honest, guys, I truly did enjoy my time with these speakers over the last six months. It was just an all around pleasant experience. Let's start off with the finish. Like I said, in the dislikes, the gloss black is really hard to keep clean, but at the same time, it looks fantastic. So you really want the, the gloss black because it looks so nice, but then you're kind of caught having to wipe them down all the time because of dust and fingerprints. But I guess that's the price you pay to have a speaker that looks this good. Personally, guys, I really do love the gloss black finish. I think SVS did a fantastic job here. It's super clean looking, super smooth, and it just looks amazing. But at the same time, if you are in a well-lit room, keep in mind that you may get some glare from your windows. I don't have this issue because it is in my theater room, which is light controlled. Uh, I do have a couple windows in this room, but I have blackout curtains, so it's never been a problem for me. 
In addition to that, even my wife loves the look of these speakers, so the WAF factor, the wife acceptance factor, I feel is pretty high with these speakers. But the premium looks doesn't stop with the gloss black finish. I'm fond of the look of the drivers as well as the shape of these speakers. I like the fact that these aren't a traditional rectangle speaker. Not that there's anything wrong with a traditional rectangle speaker, but I do like that these have a little bit of a visual uniqueness to them. It helps them stand out from the rest of the pack. And when it comes to the drivers themselves, I do like the uh, woven fiber cone. It looks fantastic. And the metal trim around each speaker is very well machined as well, and it looks good. Let's move on to what's really important about these speakers, and that's how they sound. So I'm going to break it down into three parts, the highs, the mids, and the lows. When I first got the SVS Ultras, I was coming from the Klipsch RP8000Fs. And in the first video about the Ultras, I had made a statement that I felt like the Klipsch uh, were a little bit more clear in the highs. But I now feel that that was just bad wording because it was getting misinterpreted that the SVS Ultras were not clear. That's not what I meant by that statement. Uh, only that the clips are a little bit more forward, I think is probably better wording that I should have used. Um, the SVS Ultras are still quite clear, but they're a little bit more laid back in their highs. They're not like right there punching you in the ear. And I think maybe that was my interpretation of uh, the clips being a little bit more clear. It's just that it wasn't right there in your face. So I do feel that the SVS Ultras highs were a little bit smoother than the clips highs. So it would really depend on your preference here. But for those of you that don't like the highs in the clips, you may want to try something like the SVS Ultras, which I do feel are a little bit smoother and less in your face. Overall, I do like the highs of the SVS Ultras. I feel like SVS did a great job on the crossover here in making those highs nice and smooth and not too bright. All right guys, so this brings us to the first demo, but with demos always comes a disclaimer, and that is that my recording equipment, my room, as well as your listening device greatly affect the sound. So this won't be an accurate depiction of what I'm hearing in my room, but I know that you guys love demos, so I do like to include them in my videos, but always with that disclaimer. So the first demo is called a jazz club in autumn. All right, now that we've tried a little bit of jazz, let's try some female vocals. And this song is called Gentleman by J2X and Lou. All right, now that we've discussed the highs and we've had a couple demos, let's move on to the mid-range of these speakers, which I feel is a bit of a standout feature for the Ultras. The mid-range on these speakers I feel is just rich, full, and buttery smooth. Uh, the SVS Ultras have dual 6.5 inch dedicated mid-range drivers, and I feel that SVS made great use of them here. Personally, I feel like for the price, uh, the mid-range would be tough to beat on these speakers, especially when you consider how well they also do the highs and the lows in combination with the great mid-range. There isn't much else I can tell you guys about the mid-range. I think it sums it up very nicely to say that it's rich, it's full, and just buttery smooth. I feel like they just did a fantastic job on the mid-range, which brings us to another demo. So I'm going to bring us back to the jazz song, which is a dark jazz club in autumn. And I'm no instrument expert, but I do feel like this is a soprano saxophone. But correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments below. But try and pay attention to the soprano saxophone in this song.
I know that I did use that demo already, guys, uh, but it is difficult to find free, copyright-free music. So when I do find some good ones, I do use them quite often. But if you know of a good place where I can find great copyright-free music that's high quality at the same time, uh, please drop it down in the comments below. So we've talked about the highs, we've talked about mid-range. Now let's talk about how the SVS Ultras handle bass. I feel like the bass is another standout feature of the SVS Ultra Towers. When I first got them and hooked them up and I played some bass-heavy content, I can't deny that it brought a smile to my face. The bass from the SVS Ultra Towers is truly impressive. Uh, they are rated down to 28 hertz, which isn't quite low enough to be officially labeled as a full range speaker. For those of you that don't know, uh, the label of full range speaker is typically reserved for speakers that can go from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. But that being said, 28 hertz is awfully close, so these are close to a full range speaker. The low end that they do cover is quite well done and powerful. They can hit quite hard for a tower in this price range, and they have a really great rumble as well. Actually, here's a fantastic example that I can give you guys uh, from the making of this video. So I wanted to get some footage of the bass driver doing its thing. So I was playing some bass heavy music and I had to get up close and personal with the Ultra Tower. So I was about two feet away and these things were hitting so hard and so clean. I mean, I could feel that thump in my chest. So once again, these things bring a smile to my face at how well they can handle bass and how powerful it is. So I actually do have a fairly large room. I know it doesn't quite look like that in the video sometimes, but it's 21 feet by 17 feet with eight foot ceilings and it's open up to two other levels of the home the only level that I can seal off is the basement and these speakers provide a very convincing very powerful bass experience even though this room is open up to two other levels and it's a fair size uh, room in itself so for the most part I think most people aren't gonna need to pair this with the subwoofer unless of course you have a more insatiable hunger for bass you're gonna want to put a subwoofer but I don't think most people would need that all right so we've come to the demo section yet again uh, so the first clip is actually gonna going to be the bass demo that I was discussing uh, earlier on where I was getting that thump in the chest. So it's a short clip just to show you guys some excursion. And then the second clip or the second demo is going to be a bass beat or a hip hop beat uh, that has some pretty decent bass, but I will have to keep it fairly short because it's not copyright free. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed those demos uh, and let me tell you these speakers can hit those low notes with authority. And just so you guys know and for your reference the amplifier that I was using is the Tone Winner 80 5180. So for two channels I'd say it's about 160 watts per channel each but of course I wasn't even using that much because I didn't have them cranked up. Let me just try and keep it simple and sum up the sound of these speakers for you guys. Uh, starting with the imaging yes it can be a little bit finicky but once you get it right that center image is just locked in and it is like a beam. It sounds like that center speaker is on but when they want uh, sounds to come from other parts of the room, these speakers image that very well as well. Sometimes you can hear things coming almost behind you, but uh, to your left or to your right. So the imaging on these speakers, I feel, is uh, top-notch for the price of the speaker. So I think the best way to sum up uh, the sound between the highs, lows, and mids is just very well balanced. It's a fairly neutral speaker. I would say it's pretty much bang on neutral, maybe slightly warm. Um, but it's not like anything kind of takes a backseat to the others. Yes, uh, the bass and the mids are kind of a standout feature because they are so good in this speaker, but that doesn't mean that the highs are kind of hanging back and not doing their thing. It is very well balanced, and I think that sums it up perfectly. Okay, so now that we've covered my likes and my dislikes, the God honest truth about these speakers, guys, in my opinion, is that they look fantastic, uh, they sound great, they provide a great experience for both movies and music, and they measure well. I know that in my video I didn't provide measurements for you guys here, but uh, GR Research, if you're familiar with his channel, he has measured them before, and they did measure very well. Now, of course, audio and sound is subjective, so not everybody's going to feel the exact same way I do, but I do feel that these speakers are a great all-around speaker, and they're well worth their price tag. If you have been on the fence about buying these speakers I truly hope that this video kind of pushes you towards uh, trying these speakers out um, because in the beginning I was skeptical myself too I was kind of not so sure about SVS maybe it was all hype but then I had a friend uh, shout out to John V that had SVS speakers and he would he really loved them especially again considering the price so I'm glad that I tried them out I'm glad I got them in my home because I do feel personally that they are a fantastic all-around uh, well-balanced speaker 
With SVS's 45 day trial period, you don't really have much to lose. Uh, if you guys are looking for more detailed specs or pricing, just remember that I have dropped links down in the description below. And uh, make sure you guys do subscribe. And if you do, you might as well tick the bell icon. And please take just one second out of your day to click the like button down below. It takes you no time at all, but I really do appreciate it. Remember to enjoy your systems. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.